Welcome, this is Terry Fox again. Uh, we're now going to get into the post layout validation of a DDR4 design. Uh, there's the information. This uh, video is in support of the DDR4 lab that is part of my uh, Pro Tune-Up uh, set of uh, signal integrity and electromagnetic compliance uh, you know, uh, course, if you will. And uh, here we go. So if you've got uh, questions on this and you have taken my class, that's one thing. Uh, you, you've got a pretty much a guaranteed response on that case. Uh, if you have not taken this class and you're just simply picking this up off YouTube or whatever, uh, then realize that uh, I will try to answer questions from time to time, but uh, considering the size of the YouTube audience, uh, you know, can't guarantee the response time there. So here we go. Okay, when we look at DDR4 specific validation measurements, we've got clock quality, we've got clock versus address command and control setup and hold time, you've got clock versus the the data byte uh, strobe skew, you've got uh, data byte uh, strobe skew versus the DQ bits that are within that byte lane. Uh, you've got uh, DQ to DQ skew uh, when you're reading and writing. Uh, we've got overshoot and undershoot for all signals. And there are hundreds of voltage and timing measurements that must be made and many of, the, many of them are dependent upon the signal pattern prior to this. So when you go through and you do this, the very first thing you have to do is do uh, individual simulations and just simply look, and you should be using line sim, uh, and look at the shape of the signal to make sure that this thing makes sense before you uh, kick it off and you try to uh, do literally the hundreds of uh, simulation uh, checks that you need in order to ring out a DDR4 design. So with that in mind, let's take the next step. We're going to go to the simulator. Now, uh, I call this part four, but uh, whatever. I guess it's run together. I want you to open Mentor Hyperlinks Board Sim. I'm using version 9.4 and when that comes open you've got two different possible labs that you could go into. So if you go into the demo directory and DDR4 lab, within it you've got DDR4 example PCB and DDR4 example board sim hype. This is actually the file that you're going to open. Or DDR4 lab, DDR4 example with error PCB and then DDR4 uh, example with error board sim hype. So the things ending in dot hype, those are the things that you're going to open up and open up uh, either one. If you want to see errors, then go ahead and open up the, the error file. If you just want to see what it looks like the first time to come through clean, then open up the file without the errors. Now, once you're in hyperlinks, I want you to go to setup. That is at the very top of the uh, of the uh, tool chain uh, of the, of the uh, mentor hyperlinks board sim file so it's about the second one over go to setup options that's the bottom and then directories and you have to edit the model library paths now there are a couple of critical things that must be in the library path one is the meta graphics uh, Hyperlink 64 libs, or if you're using uh, a 32-bit system, 32 libs. And the second thing is that you have to have the models that 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 correspond to the parts that are in uh, this uh, DDR4 example PCB. So those models are in the DDR4 example PCB models, and probably there's one in the uh, with error models also, but it doesn't make any difference. They're both the same as long as you get that models file and it's identified. Now, once you get into hyperlinks itself, the first thing was set up the, the directories. The second thing is set up, stack up, edit. And what I want you to do is look at what the tool thinks the board stack up is 
and compare that to your uh, to your actual manufacturing notes and make sure that the total thickness of the board is correct that the thicknesses of the dielectrics uh, are correct and the uh, uh, the uh, uh, also the isobar of the dielectric etc next set up the power supply since we're doing DDR4 we've got two critical power supplies one is whatever is 1.2 volts uh, the other is the one that would be 0.6 volts which becomes VTT for address command and control and of course make sure that you set ground to zero or whatever you're calling uh, ground then you've got to set up the differential pairs because remember that the clock and all of the strobes are differential signals so you have to make sure that the tool understands what those differential pairs are so set up differential pairs uh, if you've got questions they're good help files uh, associated with the differential pairs if you're loading my stuff it ought to come up just fine when you get into uh, the models file so again going across the top of the tool uh, setup is one of the first major headings uh, the next major heading to the right is going to be models and if you go into assign model files by reference designators uh, dot ref file when you look at that what I want you to do is uh, make sure that when you open it up there's something actually there uh, that should be set up correctly as long as you're using my labs and if not you're going to have to go through and set up that reference file finally when you're ready to actually run the simulator it's simulate SI this is oh I don't know halfway across the the, the top uh, set of uh, uh, you know tool capabilities in hyperlinks and we want to run DDRX batch simulation once you get into that you're going to see a wizard come up it'll and and about the second tab down on that wizard says initialization when you go to initialization go down and look for a button that says import and then import the DDR4 example PCB dot DDR now if you want to open the .ddr with a text file you can see exactly what's in it but the point is that if you're doing my lab this is the quickest way for me to get you through absolutely a ton of little details that can foul this up and so you get good results on the first time through so with that done then you go ahead and click through the wizard uh, the rest of the way uh, so from simulate SI uh, run DDR batch wizard initialization blah 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 step through the wizard without changing anything to see what there is now at the reports option so this is one of these steps as you're going down through the wizard it's pretty pretty close to the bottom at the reports reports option make sure that you see a checkbox that says create HTML report the last step is going to be simulate then you'll say run batch simulation and then a new window is going to come up that'll say DDR batch mode run simulation you've got to click run or this thing isn't going to isn't going to fire off now once you've done that the DDR simulation report should automatically come up because it's the report that you've clicked right up here with create HTML report uh, so that should come up automatically now if for some reason it does not come up then go to the the DDR4 example PCB uh, you know directory uh, and then open DDR results all this is a new directory and there's going to be a date code after that so it'll be DDR results all date code and then uh, go to the directory within that that says DDR report and click on report exe now that's an executable that will go through and build a really wonderful report for you now when that opens up look at the notes note the tabs across the top you've got data write data read address differential nets clock skews these are the major uh, entries in that report file so if you're looking at data right and you say well why don't the address lines show up well go over and click on the address tab or if you're looking at it at how it opens up it'll always open up on data right 
and you say, well, gee, what do I know about the clock skews? Well, go across and click the clock skew tab. Now, let's say that we look at address because if you're using the error version of this, you'll find that address, I believe it's A9, has got some problems. And when you click on the address tab, then you'll find within that there's a place where you can select pass fail uh, as far as uh, how it sorts those things. So click on fail and once it comes up you'll see that there are some things in red and you say well gee I see that the setup time has failed where did that come from? Well you're going to have to go look at the DDR4 DRAM.V because that's where the timing is for writing to the DRAM and that exists within the Mentor Graphics 9.4 SDD Home Hyperlinks Labs. So in order to see the actual data, like let's say that you saw uh, address 9 and it had an error in the setup time, just double click on that error and what it will take you to is the actual simulation data. All right. Now this is the report. So remember the tabs I set across this thing? Uh, right here. Data write, data read, address, differential nets, clock skew. Okay, so here I've got the address tab there and it says that it failed on, uh, let's see, well it'll also give me the time that it failed, but nonetheless this was one failure when it simulated, there was a second failure when it simulated, there's a third failure when it simulated. If you just sit here and double click on this uh, failure, either there or there, it will take you to something that shows you uh, the exact waveforms. Now, you might say, well, let's, let's back up a second here. Uh, let's go back to previous. Right here, it said, okay, the failure was in the setup time and it said there was only 56.3 picoseconds in setup time. Well, let's go over here and see if that was the controller. Uh, these would have to do with controller rules. I'm going to get to the, to the DRAM part of it so I can see what it should have been. The setup time for 1866 should have been 100 picoseconds and that was defined in this file. These are JEDEC standard timings that are in that file and it says the setup time should have been 100 picoseconds but if what you've got is only 56 that's not making it. So that's the way that that ties together. Now if I'm doing data read then realize that the, the, the timing as it is seen at the controller comes into play. Now the controller is a little bit uh, easier because we're talking about percentages of the clock tick, etc. And so that's a little easier to understand. But look at both DDR4 control and also DDR4 DRAM if you want to understand how is it that, uh, that this thing decided that was an inadequate time that's where those numbers come from. All right, so that's pretty much the end of this. Uh, please take your time and go through those labs uh, because the more you play with it the more you'll find out. Now one of the things that is key about trying to get rid of an error is remember that if you select for example in this case A9 in board sim and then say export to line sim that's the way I get down to the nits and grits to see exactly what's going on on that individual uh, on that individual uh, line to see what it's uh, what it's looking like. So that's it for the labs. Realize that you download the labs from my website and uh, email me if you have questions or give me a call at the office. Thank you.